Welcome to the advice show, Media with the Common Sense Approach. So we have a woman who is a banker. She got stopped by police because she had her hands off of the steering wheel at the stoplight. And the police pulled her out of the car, took her down to the precinct. You're going to hear why they kept this woman in the psych ward for eight days. I'm going to roll the clip. He held on to me and then the doctor stuck me in the arm and then I was on a stretcher and then I just woke up to them taking my clothes off, specifically my underwear. And then I was, I went back out again. When I woke up the next day, I felt like I was in a nightmare. I, I didn't understand why that was happening to me. What was happening, Cam Brock says, was troubling. Very troubling, her ordeal spelled out in this lawsuit filed in federal court. The bank executive claimed she was arrested, committed, and held against her will here at Harlem Hospital's psychiatric ward. But why? How did this nightmare begin? It started uptown in Harlem. Brock cruising in her BMW, music pumping, when suddenly an NYPD officer pulled her over. He said, why are you driving without your hands on the wheel? And I said, I was just dancing. I'm at the light, you know, and he just asked me to get out the car. Brock was detained and taken to the 30th precinct. She says she had no idea why. Were they questioning you? What was going on when no, you were in that precinct? No, they didn't question me at all. They just put me to sit down. And I was watching everyone else go through the normal, you know, being lined up, being uh, fingerprinted. I didn't get any of that. I was just waiting. After a long wait at the precinct, Brock was released. No charges filed. But she was told to return the next day to pick up her car. That's when things took a dramatic turn. It started when she showed up here at this police substation instead of the precinct. The lawsuit claims police reacted with insults and disbelief that Brock could possibly own a BMW. I just felt like from the moment I said I owned a BMW, I was looked at as a liar. They put me in handcuffs and they said because um, I need to just be in handcuffs and they're going to take me to my car. So I said, okay, whatever it's going to take to get to my car. Then EMS approached me. And they said, you know, we're going to take you to your car. And I'm like, in the ambulance? I'm going to a car in, my, in an ambulance? I'm going to my car in an ambulance? I was just so confused. She took that ambulance to Harlem Hospital. And you're in handcuffs. In handcuffs, point. in the emergency room. And then at that point, when I realized what was happening. Brock was committed to the psych ward at Harlem Hospital. They forced me to take medication. PIX11 obtained Brock's hospital records from her attorney. The doctor's diagnosis, Brock suffered from bipolar disorder and psychotic behavior, a claim Brock's attorney disputes. She has absolutely no history of mental illness, okay? To brand her as being mentally ill for the sole reason that she claims to own a BMW, which she in fact owns, to claim that she's a businesswoman, a banker, which she is, is something that is absurd. That medication was lithium and powerful sedatives. Brock spent eight days in the hospital and released. And to make matters worse, the lawsuit says the hospital slapped her with a more than $13,000 bill. And I'm like, why am I here? You know, oh, because um, you're a danger to yourself. And I'm like, how am I a danger to myself? I was just trying to get my car. That's all I was doing. Now, if this isn't the most racist thing I've ever heard in my life. So a black woman who is a banker, went to school, got her education. She's doing the right thing. She pulled herself up by her bootstraps. She's not getting entitlements. She's not on welfare. She's not on food stamps. She's doing everything that a lot of these people in this country say that black people should do. She earned her keep and she bought her a BMW because that's what she worked for and she earned. And it is a problem. You see, it doesn't matter if you go to school, you earn your keep, or you on welfare and food stamps. Those racists in this country don't like us. And it's sad when you have to deal with those savages in uniform because yes those savages do take those police jobs i'm gonna tell you what it is you have this racist savage stop this sister 
and look at her and like, how dare this black woman have a BMW and I don't have one. And then took her back to the precinct, didn't charge her with anything, but yet they still taking jabs at her for owning a BMW because they can't afford one. And one thing those racists cannot stand they can't stand to see a black person have anything. Well, I tell you what, I seen a brother today with a Ferrari. If those cops was over here, they probably would have stopped him too. Because how dare a black person buy a Ferrari? You know, how dare you own the business? How dare you get your education? See, I said this when I was talking to Brother Yakanon because I believe this. White supremacy can only thrive on black inferiority. As long as black people are, feel inferior or they live their lives inferior, then white supremacy is happy. Racism is happy because they feel superior to you. But when you get things on your own, build your own businesses, build your own economy, um, take advantage of the buying power we have around our community they can't stay in that junk and it makes them feel uneasy because they can't afford what you can afford and it's sad there's no way they can explain why this woman was put in the psych ward for eight days but yet tell her she was a danger to herself because she owns a bmw then the second thing that you didn't hear in here she was talking about barack obama followed her on twitter and it was confirmed Barack Obama do follow her on Twitter. Yet they say she was crazy for that too. So the president can't follow you on Twitter for some reason. And a black person can't own a BMW or push you in the psych war. And this is why you have groups like Black Lives Matter showing up and saying our life matters to give us equal rights and equal protection and all this other stuff. It's cases like this. Black Lives Matter didn't show up out of the blue. Or anybody who's fighting against police misconduct, just making it up. No, this stuff is real out here. And to have these racists in uniform, to have these Klan members in uniform attacking black people who not quote unquote thugs, who not stealing and everything else. That's why I don't even want to hear that crap when they talk about, well, black people will stop stealing and start committing crimes. Maybe uh, the police wouldn't bother them. Well, was this woman committing crimes? Was she stealing? Is she a thug? Is she any of that? No, she's a banker. And yet the police still mess with her. So don't give me that crap about what black people got to do to be liked. They don't like us at all anyway. I'm talking about the racists, of course. They're just savages. And that's and the savage can never think rational like the rest of us. Hit me up in the comments, future commentaries. Subscribe.